talking probably while you're talking or while other people are talking uh, it'll look oh Diana is it it'll look like bad manners but it's the only way we can get an answer to what you're actually saying um, right members update on um, performance it's now 83% of majors um, on time and 6% of majors on appeal but we start a new year next time so it could alter. Although it's only 6%, it doesn't have to vary by much for us to go to the dreaded number where the government doesn't like us. Right. I think that's all the preamble. We go to the first planning application, which I hope, if I've got the right page open, should be quick. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you, Chairman. This is a site in the open country site, the south of the village of Preeton. The site is located within a special landscape area. This is an application for the construction of the new building. It is acknowledged that the proposal does not fully accord with the development plan. However, other material considerations should be taken into account. In this particular case, paragraph 55 of the framework is a key consideration. The applicant has submitted this application as a paragraph 55 house. This allows for new houses in the open countryside if they are truly outstanding or to reflect the highest standards in architecture, enhance its immediate <coughs> setting, be sensitive to the character of the locality. The applicants have been in active negotiation with Open, which is an East Midlands based design and buy service which adheres to the Design Council's K10 principles. As a result of the proposal, has been amended following the comment from Open, so it is now considered the scheme adheres to the criteria as set out in paragraph 55 of the framework. The Parish Council now supports the proposal following its original objection. The Highway Authority, Environmental Health, Ecology, Landscape and Archaeology do not object to the proposal. The, the proposal is therefore recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, local member, Councillor Frenchman, isn't it? No, it's... My friend from the old. No, no, no. Thank you. It's quite right, Chen, that uh, this was originally uh, proposed by the Parish Council and I have reservations about this myself on grounds of sustainability. 
has been uh, represented, as officers quite rightly pointed out, and I'm even going through the focus and detailed report they have given us, as the, most of what it is said is self-evident. Just to pick out one or two pertinent phrases I think about this, is the landscape officer has said, I'm far more comfortable with how the new building currently exists in both its immediate and wider landscape. And on the environmental side, the Wildlife Trust have said uh, it's fit for purpose now. Um, I think the change has been positive, and I think this is reflected in the report. And uh, to be very brief, Chair, I have no hesitation in um, supporting this <coughs> application. Are you proposing? No, I'm happy to propose that, Chair. Okay, yes. thank you. Do you have a second, though? Uh, yes, the several. The, the, the other gentleman uh, from Capsal Parker from Brixworth was. Is the second and the next to speak, sir. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as usual, it's the same. So, this hinges is on para 55 of the framework as it does not conform to other policies, i.e., having achieved rural housing requirements, no development will be allowed in open countryside, which this application is, and also in an SLA, unless we then refer to pages 29 and 30 to Keith Thursfield's note. As the application does not meet criteria one and two, but does meet criteria three, because the parish council now supports this application. I note, however, that the conclusion on page 35 stating this does not create a precedent, and with this in mind, I would set the proposal. Thank you, Councillor Parker. Any other comments? If not, we have a... <coughs> Sorry, yes, so, Chair, just going, going back to criteria three, yes, isn't that linked to criteria two, as two and three being part of the part of one condition? Right, am I reading that right? Because it's, first of all, it needs to require to support retention for improvement of central local services and has been informed by the affected. So I'm wondering whether it's just a matter of policy whether in fact three can be a standalone criteria. Does that make any sense? I'm sure I'll just going to ask that. Does they, that make any sense? Yeah, no. They, first of all, yes, they have to meet criteria of one and two before. Right. So in a sense, it doesn't meet one and two, but you know, they've actively negotiated with Open and Power Council, with the Power Council now supporting the application. But regardless of that, we have to consider other material considerations. Yeah, 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 which yeah, Paragraph in this particular case. Okay. We have a proposal that has been seconded that the application be approved. All those in favour, please show. Yeah. Yes, you know, so. Thank you. The application is approved. Thank you. Thank you. application is as entitled uh, for a single turbine, uh, 77 metres to tip of blade, uh, 50 metres to hub. Um, I don't propose to go through the uh, detailed report uh, page by page, <coughs> other than to say that the planning balance uh, officers have considered the, the merits of the proposal and the benefits of the proposal against the, the impact uh, and in our view the impact in terms of the heritage asset. Uh, namely the Central Ancient Monument, which you just see to the south there. It's a monastic uh, grange at uh, Cold Ashby. Uh, there would be harm to the setting of that. I, I no, admittedly less than substantial harm, but uh, in terms of weighing it in the balance, you have to weigh that against the, the benefits of the proposal. Uh, in our view, the, uh, the benefits do not uh, outweigh the harm caused. I say it is finely balanced, and I understand that members have received further representations from the applicants, and I know that the applicant is here to speak tonight. The other issue with, really uh, is in respect to ecology, uh, namely bats. And again, you'll see from the report, uh, the, uh, 
uh, the reply from the, the applicants that there's a difference of opinion in terms of uh, whether or not the proposal would adversely impact on that. And that's primarily down to survey information. In our view, we're taking a precautionary approach that the case has not been made uh, to demonstrate what the impact is or isn't uh, on the, the bat population. And accordingly, that's a secondary reason for refusal. Um, one further consideration is the ministerial statement, uh, which sets out quite clearly uh, the approach to be taken to renewable energies. Uh, and again, the report considers that in detail. Um, other than that, Chairman, nothing further to add. Thank you. Um, we have a speaker, Mr. Lichman, who is the applicant. Yes, good evening. Good evening, councillors. Um, I am Mr. Edward Richfield, the farmer and landowner, who proposed wind turbine at Board, which is under consideration at this meeting. We have been in livestock farming here for 50 years, and all our land is down to grass. As you well know, farming is under great pressure from a number of different directions, from general, the central government, the common agricultural policy, and supermarket pressure. So this project would help to sustain our existing farming activity by providing some long-term security and stability for the future. <coughs> so just over 12 months ago, we looked seriously into the possibilities of our land becoming a suitable, single, a suitable site for a single wind turbine, and we approached Freeman Limited to take the project further because these types of projects need experienced people. I just wanted to say a couple of things in support of the planning application from a personal point of view, but I hope you will think about when you make your decision later. The area taken out of farming production is very small, which is important to us because we can continue to farm the land all around the winter and when it's built. We try to farm our land as carefully as possible with regard to the natural environment, and so the idea of the turbine is in line with our normal ideas. We strongly support a low carbon future, including renewable energy, and we are pleased that the recent meetings in Paris have been successful, but well, there is a lot of work still to do. Every day, life, health, communications, etc., depend on power. We feel that our site is very well placed with regard to the distance from our neighbours' houses because we never wanted our project to upset anyone. All our neighbours that live close to the A14 dual carriageway are quite used to the background on that, that comes from the fast moving traffic on the road. So we really don't feel that anyone nearby will be disturbed by any noise from the turbine. This turbine will power up to 386 average size homes and the connection will be to the power lines in the same field. We are also pleased that the large trucks for the construction and delivery of the wind turbine can get to the site straight off the A14 and will not disturb anyone's quiet village life. We know that the reason for refusal has been addressed. So we'd just like to say thank you for listening and I hope that you can support our wind turbine as it is important to us. I don't think it, it will disturb any people in the area and it is needed for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I've got to it by this time. If it's cold, it's <coughs> Chapter so Chancellor Charter. It must be on the borders of the two parishes, sir. It's in Yeah. Okay, Chancellor so Charter. It's in Wentford. No, no. It's Wentford. Yeah. It's, um, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think most members know that. Uh, I've had views about turbines in the past, but I think it's also fair to remind people that because of my background, I do really understand the problems facing uh, farmers these days and the need to consider diversification. Uh, so I don't have a problem with the thinking behind that. Unfortunately, I don't agree with many of the statements that have been made on behalf of the application and neither do some of the statutory consultees. Um, we can dispose of the noise scene quite, quite easily. Um, where I live in Yelbertov, we are very familiar with wind turbines. There are 
dozens of them around us, as the cumulative map showed. Uh, and uh, you will see that uh, people often argue that there's no noise from these wind turbines. And in fact, I've been asking a lot of people uh, a lot of questions about the noise. One thing we have discovered is that there is plenty of evidence of what is called uh, enhanced amplitude uh, modulation, low frequency noise. And uh, there is plenty of evidence of that. And in particular, because we now have a number of isolated turbines in the district, for some reason, these uh, effects seem to be particularly pronounced when there's just the one turbine. So be careful about dismissing the noise as not being an issue. The main point here, I think, is the fact that there is the uh, cumulative effect uh, of the visual uh, impact. Uh, the total of theoretical visibility, which you saw earlier on the screen, shows that uh, this will be, just this one turbine will be seen by a lot of people. Um, there is the cumulative effect. <coughs> um, OK, you can say that there are several turbines already in the landscape, so the people shouldn't mind another one. Um, I don't think that's necessarily a fair uh, judgment of, of, of people's view. Uh, I'm talking now about the people in general. We see from the um, very <coughs> comprehensive report that the officers have prepared that there have been a number of letters in support of this particular application. It's notable that none of them are from very close by. Uh, uh, we've been used to this in the past with uh, turbine applications. People who aren't directly affected are quite supportive, mainly because it's not in their backyard. Uh, so we have to be a bit careful about how much weight we give to those views. But I want to turn to the cumulative effect of, and the effect of the visibility of this turbine, which it would have on the uh, designated heritage assets. There are two very important ones. There's the one at the bottom of that diagram, which is the monastic range, Cold Ashby. Uh, and uh, there's the other one, which was shown on, a, on another diagram, which is the Naseby Battlefield, um, which is reckoned to be the second most important battlefield site in English history for a number of reasons. And uh, it is quite clear from the conservation officer's report that the turbine would result in some change to the setting of the scheduled monastic range at Cold Ashby and Naseby Battlefield, which are designated heritage assets of the highest significance. Uh, and for that reason alone, I think uh, we should think very carefully about not granting permission for this particular turbine. And so I would like to um, thank everybody for the effort that went into producing the report. And uh, I would like to, co to agree on behalf of the uh, local populace who I've been uh, consulting as recently as this morning, uh, that uh, we thank the officers for their report. We agree with their conclusion. And I would like on their behalf to propose that we accept officers' advice and refuse this application. Thank you, Councillor. Do you have a second? Yeah. I've got Councillor Osborne because I've got it down to speak next anyway. So, Councillor Osborne, you're seconded and we'll speak next as well. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I totally agree with Paul. I totally agree with Councillor Chapter. Um, as you know, my background is a sparky electrician by trade, so I actually know what these things do. I actually know what it means, um, how much they what, how much they rate. They never work at full at full working capacity ever. Um, it's only a really a, a really small percentage that they work at, um, and more energy is produced by actually making these things than it is that you get back from when they're put up. The destruction that it causes, I think, you know, I don't think, you know, I don't think a lot of people realise what goes into um, into a turbine. I think some people think that, you know, they just go there and then it goes around the turbine, but it doesn't. You have to destroy 
you know, you have to actually destroy some of the countryside. And that's not only by, like, the appearance, but it's what you do to get the cave in and everything there in the first place. It's, it, it's really, you know, it, it's, it's just another one in our area. Northamptonshire, uh, we've been told that it's one of the lowest uh, wind speed um, in, the, in the country. But how many wind turbines do we have? How many applications have we had? Uh, where, where I live in uh, Long Buckby, we've had loads of applications around that area and we do actually have wind turbines up there as well. Um, I understand um, uh, what the applicant is trying to do, but actually wind isn't the way to go. There's, there's other ways of doing it and ways that aren't going to destroy the beautiful countryside. So, yeah, I stick by um, <coughs> the officer's report. Thank you, Councillor the social chairman. Um, I uh, sympathise with the applicant um, that uh, farming is uh, not an happy place now to be uh, in. Uh, but um, I also uh, agree with the report. I have just two questions, especially that uh, my ward is on Naseby and we have had a wind farm now. Um, from where I live, I see six. Um, very early structure, and uh, since they have been erected, people are <coughs> just amazed how it has changed forever the battlefield of Nesby. Mm -hmm. uh, it is um, quite extraordinary. Uh, I don't think till they went up we realized how much it destroyed uh, what we thought will never um, uh, be. Um, sold by, by those huge uh, things and now we are all waiting to see uh, how it will affect uh, the traffic on the A14. But to come back, the officer put as reason and I would like to see um, Councillor Chandler. We, the first reason I can understand but the second reason I think there is about that uh, hasn't that been addressed by the applicant so I just would like to make sure that the reason, the second reason, is strong enough if you have to defend it on appeal. Thank you. Um, uh, let me just respond to that, Chairman, but then I'll ask the officer to do so. My understanding is that there has been a suggestion of a way of uh, dealing with the back problem, but I think we heard the officer say earlier that opinions differ on this matter. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I mean, basically, uh, the, the council, through the Wildlife Trust, uh, received comments and the, the, the reported from the North Hands Bat Group, who are considered to be uh, sort of expert in the field. Equally, the applicants have put a case um, you know, the other way, but we have given weight to the advice of the North Hands Bat Group. Um, it is a technical reason for refusal. It may well be that if satisfactory surveys are carried out, uh, and properly carried out and the methodology is agreed between all parties concerned that the impact uh, may well be demonstrated to be uh, acceptable or mitigation measures may well be deemed to be acceptable um, and it may well be that condition falls away before any uh, appeal. Um, in terms of the heritage assets, yes there are two heritage assets, the major boundary and um, the Shedstone Department at uh, Cold Ash Beach. Our view on balance is that the the impact on Navy battlefield we don't think we could sustain. Um, but that in terms of the Central Nation Monument, we were quite uh, content to defend that uh, at the field. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Uh Councillor Hatch. Uh, yeah, thank you, Jan. Um, so we can have a bit of a balanced debate here. I, I, I would like to think that this council and indeed the planning committee members can learn by experience. Um, now, in the past, we've had these signal and, and two turbines at Cairns Ashby that were approved on appeal, or allowed on appeal, and we also had one in, in Bywood Iron Hill Farm in Bywood was also allowed on appeal, and it, this was a similar circumstance and size to, these, to, the, to this one here uh, tonight. Um, I, I would also like to just point out to everybody here that, that one of the Parish Council comments that, well, you know, there might be more turbines if you allow this one. I mean, obviously, we can only look at this particular application on its, on its merits. And, and the, the officers do admit that it's less substantial harm 
But I, but I also agree with um, Councillor Osborne that the likes of solar is much more efficient than wind turbine. So, um, that's what I was going to say. Thank you, Councillor Rushing. Any more comments from members? If not, we've got a proposal that the application be reviewed. That's the officer's advice. It's been seconded. All those in agreement, please show. Those against? 11 3, the application is refused. Yeah. We're just going to check, we've got the people standing outside, why they're standing outside, which application they want. It's we don't want people talking application for 65 dwellings at the South of Newport, uh, retail unit and a medical centre. Uh, on the east side of uh, Crick, just to the south of the A428, and we move to the rest of the canal conservation area. Uh, the site also lies in uh, the special landscape area as designated in, in the local plan. Again, as with all applications, this comes down to a, a planning balance. Uh, and those things that weigh in favour of the proposal is obviously the delivery of market housing, the delivery of a, a retail unit, and the delivery of a, a, a medical centre. But uh, I would point members to the late representations, uh, particularly those from the, the local medical centre, who set up their views in respect of the, the potential for that to be delivered. Um, but that's not a reason for refusal, uh, we've got to members' attention. Uh, further benefits, obviously, in the delivery of open space and affordable housing. So there, there's some elements that do weigh uh, in favour of the proposal. Weighed against it uh, really is the development plan and uh, policies and consideration of the development plan policies, and in particular policy R1, and those safe policies in the local plan, which uh, deal with housing uh, supply, which are now afforded greater weight by virtue of the fact that we do have uh, a five-year land supply, and that uh, is a matter which has been upheld in, in several recent opinions. So those policies do afford quite significant weight. Uh, and similarly, policy R1, which deals with the distribution of, uh, of housing in rural areas, sets out quite uh, detailed criteria that will help inform the part two of the plan, which is an early stage, but also deal with the residential development um, currently as well as looking at residential development um, and the rural allocation for the district has been met. And that is where we find ourselves. The rural allocation is set up in the joint course strategy has been met and indeed exceeded. And therefore the bar uh, for further residential development is, is raised higher, uh, taking account of the criteria rule and rules one to, to five. Uh, in our view, weighing all of those considerations both for and against the report concludes that uh, the conflict with policy um, is not outweighed by the public benefits of this proposal. And accordingly, we recommend the application be refused, Chairman. Thank you, Ira. We have uh, three speakers. Mr. Kukus is against the application. 
My name is Phil Clubis. I've lived in Crick since 1981, 34 years. So I'm a newcomer in village terms, <laughs> but I'm passionate about retaining the village feel and the identity of Crick. I'm speaking for myself and other residents who, over a number of conversations and meetings, some public, have expressed great concern about more housing in Crick. There seems to be a continual pressure on Crick, previously designated as a limited development village, but which in the last 15 years has expanded by an 85%, with 400 plus houses and a doubling of the population. As a village, we have started to produce a neighbourhood plan. On our initial consultation with the village, they were emphatic in rejecting more housing, over 81% against. In this consultation, there were no villagers who thought we should have fewer open spaces. In opposing this and other proposed greenfield applications, which this year alone totaled applications for 196 houses, the residents of Crick are not acting out of nimbyism, but out of a feeling that we have more than done our bit in creating new homes in far greater proportion than many other villages. As a result, our resources, school, amenity areas, meeting places, and by far and not least, the narrow roads through the village are already under extreme pressure, which this proposal would only make worse. The proposal is cited with an access onto West Haddon Road that is dangerous, being in a short section of the main road into the village, on a bend, and between a roundabout and a hookback canal bridge. The proposal that the shop and GP surgery be placed on this side at the extreme edge of the village will only cause additional traffic to flow through the already congested streets to this dangerous access. However, this is only an outline planning application on whether the shop and GP surgery, probably included to give some perception of community payback, but inappropriately placed on the first floor over the shop, will survive the full application remains to be seen. Also, for the same reason, the current attempt at keeping the developed area at least some way away from the canal and the popular towpath from the canal bridge to the canal tunnel, a conservation area, may not survive into the full planning application this outline permission, if this outline permission is granted. It is generally felt that this area of natural beauty, which is designated a special landscape area, which is used by residents and voters, should not be encroached upon. Finally, if we're talking about planning in its true sense, some thought should be given to the radio, the rugby radio site development two miles from Crick. People in housing need do not recognise administrative borders. The radio station will provide some 6,200 some 6, houses over a decade in a properly planned way with appropriate <coughs> roads, schools, shops and infrastructure generally. I suggest that this is a much better way to provide for housing need in the area of the east of Rugby and bounded by Lilbourne Creek and Killsby, not a hodgepodge of greenfield development of sensitive sites. I therefore ask that you accept the recommendation of your officers and reject this application. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Lowe, Parish Council. <coughs> Uh, Mr Chairman, Planning Commission members, uh, my name is Roger Lowe, I'm Chairman of the Crick Parish Council and I'm speaking on their behalf. In our own discussions in the Parish Council and in our consultations with the villagers of Crick, there's been unanimous and overwhelming opposition to this development. Our detailed response is in the papers that you have and you already have studied these so I won't dwell in detail on them. But one area I want to look at is that the proposal very much masquerades as being conservation-led and providing many benefits to the community of Crick. I just want to consider that. They're proposing to give us a nice canal-side pocket park, whilst they're despoiling the majority of the special landscape area by putting 65 houses and a surgery and a shop on it. The development isn't partly in the SLA, as it says in the papers, it's mainly in it. They want to give us a new surgery, but that's only needed so that Crick can become bigger. And it's only convenient for their new houses. Most of the 1,500 parishioners who use our existing surgery will have to travel further. The elderly are more likely to have to drive there, and will be having to turn into the site across a busy main road and able to see oncoming traffic beyond the humpback bridge. Nor did they bother to tell the GPs that it would be located on the first floor of the shop, which I know from speaking to them is unacceptable, as it also is to the rest of the village. 
They want to give us a new shop to reduce the traffic problems in the village. The problem there is that it may well result in the closure of our post office. The post office is at the heart of our community. We can and will take steps to control parking and traffic, but we can't mend that broken heart. They want to give us a new bridge across the canal for pedestrians and make it safer for them. On the other hand, their proposed busy entrance to the site will provide a death trap for car drivers and their passengers, whatever the speed limit is imposed on that main road. <coughs> Lastly, we are very fearful to this development of Lyon. It will set a precedent for housing developments on a whole swathe of greenbelt land surrounding the east, south and west of the village, outside the existing development boundary. There are several very good and sound planning grounds for this proposed development to be refused as put forward by the planning officers and others. After several years of expansion, Crick now has more than enough houses to meet local needs and to help meet the needs of Daventry District. Our social resources are now at full stretch. We would urge the committee to heed our pleas and the officers' arguments and refuse this development here and now. Thank you, sir. Mr. Farley is for the application. Can you hear me right? Yeah. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to address the, the, the uh, comment that we'll be on the, the surgery will be on the first floor. Was an you can come uh, speak a bit louder. Oh, I can round. Yeah, please. You, you can come round, yeah. But you, you are a little difficult to hear. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to first of all address the, um, <coughs> the, the statement that the GP said we'd gone first floor of the shop. Uh, it's an indicative plan and we wouldn't want to put it above the first floor of the shop. Um, firstly, or secondly, Mr Chair members, thank you for the opportunity to speak today. The applicants have lived in the village for decades. They've turned down dozens of offers all around from house builders want to deliver a development that addresses many of the concerns raised by local residents through our public consultation. These include a replacement of doctor's surgery, a footbridge over the Grand Union Canal, an additional co-op store to reduce congestion in the village centre, and also provision of bungalows and starter homes for young families. None of these needs have been suitably addressed through the David Wilson or Barrett's developments that are under construction now, and there will be no further opportunity until major residential developments are again permitted in the future, perhaps in the 2030s. And even then, it would require an equally altruistic applicant. The proposal does comply with policy R1, and the list of benefits goes way beyond the improvements in the primary health care facility that the policy threshold suggests. Policy R1 recognises that there will be occasions where the limits on rural growth should be suspended to secure village improvements. Furthermore, it is current government policy to encourage rural growth, recognising that rural areas need sustainable futures as much as urban areas do. Crick is one of the most successful and sustainable locations for growth in the district. The continued growth of debt to thousands of additional employees will only increase the pressure on the village, and a positive approach to planning would ensure that the village is able to cope in the future. The landscape officer raises no objections, and the conservation area will be safeguarded through the buffer created by the proposed park and the tree planting between the park and the new homes. The applicants have also identified a preferred developer which specialises in high quality, bespoke conservation design and construction. The applicants want every aspect of the development to be extensive. There is concern locally about the impact on the post office, but in reality the proposed co-op store will not increase competition. It would in fact duplicate the existing provision of the village, but it would be in a location that would be more accessible to customers from there and reduce congestion in the village centre. Furthermore, the applicant would be happy to accept a condition pivoting the duplication of the post office services. We are unable to determine the level of full housing deliverable until we can progress discussions with the NHS on the cost of delivering the new surgery. <coughs> However, there is a desire to provide as much full housing as possible and a focus on starting homes. Access and highways remains the only technical issue unresolved. We received highways comments on the TA only three weeks ago and have had insufficient time to address the comments, which requires, amongst other things, a full reassessment and remodeling of the village centre junction where the existing court is located, which suffers from chronic congestion. We would be very grateful that if members support the principle of the development, the 
decision to be deferred pending satisfaction conclusion of the highway matters. And with this sort of confidence, we can progress discussions with the NHS and determine the levels of all perhaps in its deliverable. Thank you very much, and I'm going to ask this. Thank you, sir. Two local members, have you decided which one of you is speaking? No. You're speaking first, Councillor Officer. Right. Thank you, Chair. Are you all the member of the committee? Yes, you do. You do speak first, don't you? Uh, thank you, Chair. Well, we have before us, um, Councillors, a 62, approximately 62 page report. Enormous efforts gone into this um, by officers. I'd like to thank them, first of all, for that. Um, we've heard some very eloquent speakers on this subject this evening. And I'd like to just throw in one or two uh, adjuncts to that. Basically, if you look at that uh, very planned Victoria one on the screen there, just look how much more infill that's going to create for Creek. Yet more. Are we going to turn Creek into a town, or are we going to keep it as a village? I think we should keep it as a village. We've already got a huge development going on just across the border, and I've said that before. Um, why on earth do we need this? I don't believe we do. And I would now like to propose, straight away, Chair, that we follow officers' advice. Thank you. Do you have a second then? Councillor Chancellor. Uh, Councillor, uh, would you? Oh, well, yeah. Uh, we'll let the other local member go first. Thank That's you. a lot, Thanks, <coughs> Officers have given compelling reasons as to why you should reject this application. And you've heard the cogent arguments of the parish council and the local residents. So I don't need to speak at any length. I just want to emphasise one of your points. First of all, it's against policy. Secondly, we have to find the alone supply. And although it's only an indicative figure, and um, it's not for a drawbridge, we're now full in the rural areas, we have actually reached the, the figure in the core strategy. Uh, for housing in the rural areas. The sites belong to the village in open countryside and in a special landscape area and are uh, its impacts on the Grand Union Canal Conservation Area. <clears throat> it isn't well connected to the village and in fact it points away from the village in the indicative uh, designs and plans. The access is unsuitable, in fact it's dangerous. Uh, even if the 30 mile an hour speed that they were imposed on the full terrain. It squeezed between a roundabout, which ends a 50 mile an hour speed limit from the bypass, and a humpback blind bridge over the canal. There will inevitably be extra cars on the main road in, <coughs> in Crick, which will further exacerbate problems which everybody is fully aware of of, of the traffic and the parking. Mitigations do not bring benefits and only possibly reduce harm. It certainly isn't enough here, and I ask you to refuse the application. Thank you, Councillor Lerner. Um, members. Oh, sorry, I'm Councillor Frenchman, wants to speak first, then Councillor Paul. So just an observation, Chair, there's an interesting pattern developing if you cast your mind back to the Chapel Brampton um, uh, application a few months ago where the developer felt that uh, producing a, sh a shop and other uh, community benefits, it would make the uh, uh, development acceptable to people. It seems to be an increasing uh, policy of developers just to think up some things to add to their plans and then uh, expect everybody locally to jump up and down saying brilliant and we will love our, love our village to be swamped by further development. Yeah. I think we should very carefully <coughs> watch this trend. Thank you, Councillor Frenchman. Councillor Paul? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I don't think I could cap um, the first speaker. Um, very um, eloquent, I think he said it all. Very briefly, we've got to find the land supply, we've met the rural allocations. It's beyond the confines of a village. It's adjacent to a canal conservation area in a special landscape area. The other thing that I would like to point out, that as members, we know that how difficult it is to even think about getting a doctor's surgery into anywhere, let alone any application. 
it, it's not as easy as uh, well we we'll put a building there and they can move in. It, it just doesn't work that way. I have to agree with the first speaker and uh, agree with officers of vice uh, chairing you. Well, as a chairman, you seconded it. I did give you a chance to speak. Would you like to? Um, nothing to add, Chairman. Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Thatcher. Yeah, well, thank you, Chairman. And, uh, first of all, one of the things that, that um, I found rather uh, strange with the um, with Mr. Farley's submission is that he's saying that uh, he, he's going to support the affordable housing, which in this case in this council is 40 percent. But yet on page 103. Uh, he says that he can only afford 29% of the viability um, because it wouldn't be viable to do the, the full 40%. Um, and as far as the rural growth is concerned, I mean, it, it's good practice to have a, a little bit of development in each village rather than try and put it all in one, in one village just because somebody else has got an application to put it. So, um, yeah, that's what I've got to say, gentlemen. Thank you, Councillor Patchett. Right, if that's it, we've got a proposal the application will be refused, which has been seconded all. All those in favour, please show. Unanimous, I think. Unanimous, 14. The application is refused to be given reasons. Access the provision of uh, public open space is set up in the report. Again, I don't propose to go through the report in detail, other than to say that um, in terms of the planning balance, uh, there are items and matters which weigh in favour of the proposal, and there, equally there are items and matters and policies which weigh against. Um, suffice it to say, the site itself sits um, very central in the, uh, in the village as now constructed. I've put up the local plan in set really to just briefly give members a, an explanation as to why the report uh, considers HS11. Um, you'll see that the, the application site uh, was part of a designated area of public open space um, uh, with an allocation of housing land to the east and obviously the bypass that's now constructed obviously indicated at that time in 1997. Uh, for those who know Crick, um, pretty much all the land within the bypass has now got the benefit of plan commission and is or is about to be uh, infilled by residential development. Um, so on the ground, effectively, although this site, uh, in terms of that particular plan, sits outside the confines of the village, the village limits, as, as outlined by the black uh, line uh, on the ground it's very much seen as being within the village now it's very much uh, at the heart of the village and I think that's an important consideration when looking at the, uh, the merits and the impacts of this particular proposal. Again, I, as I said, I don't propose to go through the important detail of them to say that the applicants have sought to engage with the community in, in terms of with officers in terms of uh, trying to deliver a development that to the conduct of concerns raised. Um, the initial application for 16 dwellings has been reduced to 11, and the, the result of that really is to increase the, the area of open space to be provided towards the, uh, to be offered to the parish council to effectively increase the amount 
public open space at the, the centre of the village. Um, the benefits of that are obviously that the land is currently in private ownership. Uh, the provision of public open space which secures at least part of the site uh, in the long term towards public ownership and as an open area. And for those who know Crick, uh, the visual enjoyment of that particular open space has been somewhat affected by the construction of a permitted development tents uh, cuts across the site. So that's a benefit. Other benefits include the provision of affordable housing as well as the provision of market housing. Weighing against these considerations is the, uh, the importance of this area of land uh, near the, the heart of the village and also next to the uh, St. Margaret's of Antioch Church, which is a grade one listed church. The site itself contains archaeological remains of uh, the medieval village, which would be contemporaneous with the, the church itself. And the result of that is that um, all heritage advisors have uh, emphasised the importance of the, the application site in this space, positively contributing to the setting of the church, uh, but also for the fact that it contains archaeological remains. And visually and amenity-wise, it is uh, a nice area of open space that contributes to a sense of space within the village itself, albeit uh, affected by the close border fence. So th those are matters that weigh against the proposal because any development of the site will cause harm, um, <coughs> simply by virtue of uh, developing what has been a site that's been undeveloped for many hundreds of years, uh, and will result in the loss of archaeological remains, and will impact on the setting of the church. So those matters and those considerations weigh against the proposal. Um, <coughs> Um, and also, as you've heard in the previous uh, <coughs> report, the situation with respect to residential development in rural areas is uh, that the bar effectively has been raised higher as a result of the council, A, being able to demonstrate a, a five-year land supply, which gives you added weight towards those policies that deal with housing supply and the delivery of housing both in the, uh, the safe policies that were planned, but also the policies in the joint core strategy. And secondly, the fact that the rural allocation, albeit it's not a target, has been met, has been exceeded, and accordingly that the latter half policy R1 is engaged. And it talks about, the first two, about you know, uh, resulting in environmental improvements, but also whether or not it uh, provides uh, support to uh, village services that might be under a threat, so that the development is required to support those services. Clearly, <coughs> the latter is no evidence been demonstrated to satisfy the latter. And the former, given the concerns of heritage uh, advisors, and the concerns set out in the report, renders the item one not being met either. Um, so those are matters that weigh against the proposal. Turning to the actual layout uh, and the concerns of the Highway Authority, uh, and obviously we must look in advance should the applicant and should this application be refused tonight, an application will go to appeal. Um, if it does go to appeal, without prejudice, the council is required to advise an inspector of any conditions uh, or any matters that he, what he should consider when uh, dealing with the appeal in the event that he might be, or she might be persuaded to uh, allow the appeal. The two uh, layouts that we put forward by the applicants uh, deal with the uh, access coming across the site. One that's before you is a much more infor informal access, it's not to adoptable standards, but its impact on the open space would be much less than what the Highway Authority are seeking, which is a fully adopted uh, access coming across the open space. So in those circumstances, officers would suggest that uh, an informal uh, access would be uh, create less harm in that particular event should an uh, inspector be reminded to uh, allow an appeal in due course. In either case, there is harm. That harm uh, is, is one of the elements that uh, we would cite as a reason for resisting development uh, as a whole. But in the event that an inspector might uh, be considering uh, looking upon uh, an appeal favourably, we would be suggesting that uh, 
the informal um, or unadopted uh, standard approach would be much more favourable and less harmful approach to accessing the site than a uh, fully engineered adoptable uh, method. Part of that, Chairman, nothing else to that. Thank you. On the speaker, Mr. Jackson, Paris Council. Good evening, uh, Mr. Yeah, Chairman and members of the Planning Committee. I'm Jill Jameson speaking on behalf of the Crick Parish Council, which is opposing this development. Um, I obviously will be re emphasising some of the points which you've already heard this evening. Over the last few years, Crick has been subjected to house building on a major scale, with the barrack development of 135 houses and the expansion of the David Wilson estate by a further 65 houses, all under current construction. This has placed an overwhelming burden on the village infrastructure, which little can be done to mitigate. Furthermore, this proposal is also next to the village school, and it needs to be borne in mind the negative effects the construction phase would have upon the children's education, both in terms of noise and air pollution. On the 15th of June, the Parish Council invited the residents to a public open meeting to hear their views on this proposed development. The response was 100% in opposition. The Parish Council has also begun the process of developing a neighbourhood plan, and whilst this has not yet been submitted, it is well advanced in its preparation. Questionnaires have been submitted to every household within the parish, and again, the overwhelming response has been against any further development, and to preserve the green spaces within the village. The planning policies within the plan seek to reflect this. Crick is a historic village with some 50 Grade two listed buildings, and the impressive Grade One church of St. Margaret's of Antioch. The development site lies next to St. Margaret's, which is the most important historical, architectural building and landscape feature of the village. The proposed development is on the medieval centre of the village and would have been contemporary with the church. This is demonstrated by the landforms and the findings of the archaeological digs. This site has remained undeveloped, and as such, its importance has increased not only in terms of its open aspect, but also because of its archaeological and historic importance and its relationship to the historic core of the village. As more development has occurred throughout the village, these areas of green space have taken on a greater significance. Building on this site would bring about an irreversible change to this open space and its relationship with the church. Significant harm would therefore be done to the church, which is a designated heritage asset, and the archaeological assets, and as such, it is in conflict with same policies GM2 and BN5 of the Joint Core Strategy. It is also in conflict with policy HS11, Criterion C of the Daventry District Local Plan, and R1B, as it would result in the loss of open land, which is of particular significance to the form and character of the village. We believe that there is no significant public benefit from the scheme, which could be seen to mitigate the adverse effects. The village design statement further identifies the view across the open, this open space from the Oak Lane footpath towards the church as being important to retain. It also identifies the whole of the site as an important open space. The village is within your care, and we look to you to preserve our heritage by following the officer's advice and refusing this planning application. Thank you. Thank you. Local members, Councillor Robertson. Thank you, Chair. I was just asking whether I was going to make the same speech again as the last inquiry. <laughs> this is a very different uh, proposition, uh, of course, and, um, uh, but most of the uh, points that have just been made by the Parish Council are still valid. Um, Irrespective of whether that road that cuts what theoretically would, would remain a public amenity, whether it be up to local standards or, or a private drive, it still cuts the whole thing in half, and I do not like that one bit. If we move on to the dreadful fence that they put up around their property in order to presumably emphasise the fact that it's private, and I really don't know why they put that up, it's a real mess. I have to say, uh, and uh, I, d I don't know what could be done about that. Probably nothing. Um, I presumably, they're volunteering to take that down, are they? If they get if they get planning permission, uh, uh, I, would, I would imagine that's what they're saying. Um, anyway, um, it's yet another infill to create, yet another one. And as has been rightly pointed out, there are already 
two large scale building developments going on in that village. Crick simply doesn't need any more. We don't need any more. I'll say it again, there's another huge development going on across the county boundary. Crick does not need it. So I therefore, again, Chair, propose that we follow officers' advice. First of all, do we have a second that? I think you were first down at that time, Councillor Osborne. Can you reserve your right for a few seconds while the local member speaks? Thank you, Chair. I'm not sure there's anything for me to add. But I think it's all been said already. This is a very valuable and valued open <coughs> space in the middle of the village. It's extremely important from a heritage point of view. It's within the uh, very close to the Grade 1 Eastern Church. And indeed, it's archaeologically important as well. And we really must reject it this time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Lamar. Councillor Osborne, would you like to speak? I don't think anything more needs to be. Okay, that's fine. Catch up, you feel the same? I would like to come to the facts because it's true, it's a nice one. And um, I know normally we can't do anything for the facts, and it's not for the funding application. But due to the close proximity of the Red East One church, uh, should it not be viewed by our conservation officer? Because I do agree. Uh, besides, uh, the development will uh, be uh, quite, quite uh, would have an impact on free. This fence is certainly a monstrosity. It's good by the very wall. Thank you. I'm getting a nod from the officers of this permitted yeah. development. Yes, um, absolutely. Although it looks awful. Chair, sure, no, disagree. Yes, yes. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's quite this one. It affects yes. the setting of yes. great one yes. listed yes. building. Yes. Exactly. It is a listed building yes. in course of Yes. So what to do? Yes, I, it's what I wanted to say. It's a great least one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't propose to have the discussion now, but no. uh, we can certainly look into it. Uh, yeah. But it's not within the code of a listed building. Uh, and mind me, probably wouldn't be quite fine. I agree that it does affect the setting, yeah. yes. uh, but it's not within the code of a listed building. <laughs> It will be talked about as another place. Yes. No, I just wanted, I'm sorry, I didn't want to add, I just wanted to throw it. Yes, okay. And then the, the parish can do whatever they want. <laughs> <laughs> We've got Councillor Patchett next, then Councillor Robertson, then Councillor Paul. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. It's just one comment, really. I, I just wondered why uh, Quick Parish Council hadn't looked into making that village registered for the screen. The simple answer, what Chairman, is that it's a public open, it's not a public open space, it's a private land. Mm -hmm. uh, there's been no rights of access across the land, so uh, it, it is that, it's a private land. It's just, just a throwaway comment, Chair. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you threw it away. Councillor Robertson. I was just going to add, Chair, thank you. Um, that, uh, our legal advice is now that uh, because, it's, it, because it's within the setting of a grade one listed building, we may well be able to take action at a future time. If that's the case, I would urge officers to consider that. I'm sure they will. Councillor Paul? Well, um, I think we've heard the officer say that he will consult with our uh, legal advisor um, and I, I don't have any doubt that they will and I have confidence in, in both of them. I object to this type of application. I, I, can, I can hear various um, landscape officers, conservation officers, the right of, you know, a conservation area. You have the right to look into a conservation area as well as looking out of it. Um, I know this is not a conservation area. Uh, I don't see any reason why it can't be going forward. It has immense historic um, relevance to Crick. It will completely destroy the views into Crick and as somebody has already said, um, I think it was a local member, that the, the houses are facing away from Crick. Um, forgetting the developments on the, um, on the BT site, um, irrespective of those, this application uh, shouldn't go through. Um, it's, it's uh, uh, for want of a better word, it's a car buckle, but it's a, an internal car buckle because it, it, it doesn't sit well within the village. 
Thank you. Well, I have no problem whatsoever We're in the room with officers. Councillor Bolt. Uh, speakers, we've got a proposal that the application be refused, which has been seconded. All those in favour, please show. It's unanimous. 14. The application is refused to be given a reason. Just about Here, by the way, I'm the vice chairman of the Wheaton Sports Association, which was established by local residents in 1993 and became a registered charity with the aim to help local groups of sporting and recreational nature with both volunteer time and funding. The WSA uses its 400 club and regularly fundraises events to secure their funding. The organisation is run entirely by volunteers. Since its inception, the WSA has expended many thousands of pounds on maintaining the temporary changing room units, which you just saw flash up on the screen. Uh, we were also granted funding to several village groups, including the primary school, scouts, cricket and netball teams. The current position is that the WSA initially provided the temporary changing units that, that reside on Jubilee Field. These are no longer fit for purpose and a severe financial drain. The football club which is developing its grassroots football for the youngsters is growing fast and without better facilities this is likely to prohibit further growth. Their funds to maintain a unit would be better invested in the provision of sport. 
It was identified during consultation for the village vision in 2009, subsequently adopted as the parish plan by the parish council, that new changing facilities and extra community space would benefit the village. The emerging neighbourhood plan had also identified a substantial shortfall in provision for both sports, outdoor space, indoor sports and community space for a village the size of Weed. The village hall is regularly oversubscribed and their management committee are supportive of the additional community space and envisage working in partnership with the WSA. Other community space available is much smaller. All community venues have been consulted during the neighbourhood plan consultations and have reinforced the need for further space. The new building will offer a versatile space which can operate in independent modules. The inclusion of welfare is a necessity for any public building in order to assist with its sustainability and should be seen as a requirement for those people who may need to use the space. The local school also finds itself short of space and this building could offer an alternative breakout for special classes or meetings. As it is in central to the village, it will help with accessibility and with the provision of disabled spaces for parking at the front of the building means we can cater for all. The removal of the existing changing unit will enable the village car park to be increased in size, thus helping the village with additional space as well as the provision of the new building. Consideration has been placed around traffic management for example, minibus or bus drop-offs and overflow parking will be available at the village hall to alleviate concerns about parking raised by residents. Could you wind up now, sir? Or be finished? I'm sorry, it's a three minute long yeah. one. Yes, oh, I do apologise. The gun has gone, sir. I was so engrossed. We did not say it if you are not on the side. I'm going to do to conclude then. We deserve to have this modern facility which can accommodate sports for all ages and genders as well as additional community <laughs> space. We trust the planning committee will be minded to support the planning officer's recommendation to approve our application. Thank That's you. Sir. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Right, local members, Councillor Smith for a yes. start. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, that was a pretty well presented, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, well, well, well spoken from the Women's Sports Association. Uh, yeah, Wheaton's challenged in many respects with regard, regards to sport, so I absolutely support this. Um, the, the village it only actually has one football pitch, that is it. The whole of the village, uh, any way in which we can enhance that, that asset, um, I'm an absolute supporter of it. Um, the amount of work that the Wheaton Sports Association has put in with the parish council has been immense. Um, and having said that, that, they're not at the end of the, the, the line yet because they're still challenged, or the parish council is still challenged with contaminated land on the site. So um, I think. That, Absolute support for me, and I hope for you guys as well, um, in getting this uh, to its next point because they're still not there. When should we actually approve this application? Um, because they still have this contamination to deal with, which I'm sure they will um, get around it. So, uh, yeah, 100% 100 support, uh, and um, I think we should go with opposite advice. Is that a proposal? Yes, it is. Council. Right, do you have a second there? Councillor Irving Swift. Can, I've got you down on the list to speak anyway. Can, can you leave yours to the second person from we've spoken, Councillor Amos? Would you like to say anything? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you what, it's not like that on a Sunday when he talks about gardening, is it? A lot of work uh, has been done uh, by them, and uh, we wish them well, and hopefully this uh, civilian will uh, a great deal of uh, use to many in the community, so well done. Thank you, Councillor Simon. Uh, I've got the person that seconded, which then I've got Diana, and then I've got Councillor Olga and Councillor Landl. So, first of all, Councillor Olga. Oh, I do beg your pardon, Councillor Hill did request to speak as well, so I'm going to let him speak. I'm going to let you speak now, and then I'm going to let the second speak, okay? Right, thank you, Chairman. Um, I speak actually in my portfolio role. 
um, as members of this committee are aware, um, sport and young people are two of my passions. I would like to voice my support for this application. I get many requests to support various projects and schemes, but I don't support them willy-nilly just because they're sport, etc. But I do support them uh, uh, and I can see the benefits sports-wise and to the community. I first met the chairman of the Weedon Sports Association a few years ago now at a volunteer forum meeting. He invited me to look at their plans and now having worked with them, I have to say they've always adopted a professional approach to this project. I've attended their meetings, supported at parish council meetings, and I know they've worked with and actually continually consulted with our planning department, as well as been stated earlier on, carrying out various fundraising activities towards their aims. You will see they also have Sport England support and very heavily involved with Sport England and the FA. Now, councils are targeted with increasing physical activity, tackling obesity, and in particular, encouraging our young people to take part in this. I mentioned earlier the word benefits, and this project ticks all the boxes. It will provide additional facilities, including better change of facilities, and this is particularly relevant to the younger age group. Also as stated, it will provide extra hall space for community use, as the existing village hall is near enough used to full capacity. This application, as you can hear, or as you have heard, has got the support of the district councillors. The county council also supports, and also our MP. I would therefore ask our planning committee to also endorse and approve. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Howell. Councillor I have really very little to add. I wish them well. And um, if they need uh, some funding, I will uh, also direct them to North African County Council. And uh, a county councillor who has an empowerment fund. So if any help is help, Let's see your uh, county councillor and maybe. Councillor Robin Brown. Yes. Yeah. Oh, he will be delighted to help you and try to squeeze it for 7,000 pounds. Thank you. <laughs> um, not much to add apart from obviously since the Olympics, it's um, uh, young people have, have had a boost in sports um, and. You know, whatever we can do to promote that and to help villages, then yeah, it should be done. Looks like they've done a, a, a great job. Um, Councillor Smith said about uh, the contamination, but as far as I'm concerned, it, it, it's totally covered um, here um, in the report. Um, so I wish them all the luck, um, and I totally, fully am support them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, I think Councillor Smith's right about the, the, the nature of the contaminant. I think it's asbestos, is it? On that now, so that's quite a significant hurdle. It's just really a, a, a point, a point seven. Um, the local kids uh, use the, the play apparatus that is actually on the site. And I'm just wondering uh, if we could amend point seven to say that the relocation of the play equipment shall be carried out in accordance with the agreed details prior to construction. And the reason being is so uh, uh, a member of the parish council is a bit concerned about um, how long the bill will take, etc. And if the developers could relocate the um, equipment so that the field can still be used whilst construction is taking place. I think that's taken into account the needs of the local community. I don't think it's an unfair condition to slightly amend. Um, and as long as the, the the placement or the replacement of the, the, the equipment doesn't obstruct the bill, whether that could be a condition. So the condition just amended, say prior to construction of the main build, that the relocation of the play equipment be placed so that the local users can use it. We'll ask an officer to really come. It is possible, but I think sort of taking a pragmatic approach in a, if sort of the proposed relocation was in the way of. Construction vehicles. I, I it, 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 
making sure uh, the so best place for it. But we could work, we could work to that extent, because obviously the planners have been put as to where the equipment will go. And I think it's fair for the local community to be allowed to use the field and the local kids whilst construction is taking place. I think that's a reasonable condition. Is something that can be investigated? Okay, I'll appreciate that. Just to check whether the space um, available for because, to be because of, that it may well be if they restrict the whole area because of construction on the other hand if it is possible i think that would be fair to the local the officers will look at and if it's possible it will be done thank you, you chairman and um, the relocation of play equipment um, unless it's a huge um, installation doesn't require coming permission so. no 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 it's part of the condition in, indeed but it's um as to how and when <coughs> they do that is outside of planning control is the point. We've, we've got it in there as a condition that it will be located, but right. I don't know that they'd be in a position to relocate it. But we're we'll looking at your request. It's a condition. It's a condition here. Yeah. No, it's, it's a condition to make sure that, because one of the, one of the concerns is an existing play area. You do not want to see lots yeah, of Yeah, we're just saying the timing of that, that could be looked into. And also it's the parish council's land. Okay, so we don't continue. It will be looked at. Thank you. Thank you. If it can be added, it will be added. If it can't, well, obviously, there will be a reason why it can't. Councillor, now for next. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I can't see um, any report here from the Crime Prevention Design Advisor. Um, I don't know whether they will be used in this case because I noticed that there has been uh, recent vandalism of play equipment. I know they generally have quite a bit to say about where um, you know things are located, um, and it also mentions here from the parish council um, that they've put it's noted that the CCTV and lighting is included in the scheme, um, which should help with current vandalism problems. I can't see that anywhere else mentioned in the report. And I couldn't see it in the condition either, so I'm not sure about that one. To come back, I, I know that the, uh, the Sports Association have been heavily involved in trying to make sure this, this property is not vandalised uh, sort of with materials and everything else. Um, CCTV they're proposing as well. Um, so given the location, yes, potentially there might be some sort of crime prevention issues. Um, but at the same time, they are trying to use materials which are quite, quite subjective or quite all right for its location. Okay, and, and it's just where and it's just where it's located because obviously when there is any sort of play equipment and it's going to be moved or whatever, um, they always recommend that it is visual. Um, because obviously that cuts down on um, vandalism going on or antisocial behaviour that might occur in the park. But it still doesn't answer the question. The Paris Council, according to this report, um, assume that there is going to be CCTV in lighting. Is there or isn't there? That's, that's all I want to know. It, it, it's, it's something which we can condition if oh. you do see that. that <coughs> well, I, well, I think as they've already had antisocial behaviour, and I, I don't know in the past whether they've had the mobile camera. Um, put around, but um, you know, the, it, it, to me, if the parish council feel that that is a need, then you know, I'd. Okay, you can look into that. Uh, through you, Chairman, we can um, send if members of, would like us to, we can put a condition about um, crime design and exploring that. Okay, that's the next. Thank you, Chair. Um, well, I'm really happy to see and uh, uh, go along with the approval for the uh, changing rooms of Weedon. As a uh, Daventry Town Councillor, um, <coughs> it's a shame that uh, in Daventry we don't have the same ambition because um, we've seen the fish ponds changing room disappear, the hollow changing rooms disappear, the headlands changing rooms. I know they're not relevant chair to this oh, uh, so application, but yeah. the point I'm, I'm making that I know I'm having to make it, but the, the, the uh, recommendation by the officers, but just making the point that here in Daventry, even on the new developments, we have no sports facilities. Yes, um, Councillor Carr, this application has come from a group in Wheaton. It's got support of the parish council, and that's how any, any facility like this originates from any of our villages. 
Dunphy is a parish council as well, and there are organisations in Dunphy which can do exactly the same, but they haven't done it. It isn't for our officers to say there's no facilities here, we'll put some there, it's for an applicant to apply. The facilities we had here have been demolished. That's oh. all my point. They're obviously not being supported by local groups. So like Chairman, Chairman, can we get back to the application? Anyway, we're back on the application now. If anybody else wish to speak on it? Councillor Osborne and Councillor Yes, sorry, Councillor Osborne. Councillor Osborne, you're welcome. Thank you, Chair. 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 The volunteers are not paid to do it. They've all got together and decided that this is what they want for their area, for their youth, for their kids, for their grandkids, for all that lot. Maybe, like, in, in Dabbletree, they weren't supported and that's why they're no longer here. But that's, but that's why. Thank you. No, I'm just, I'm just saying that. Well, OK. That's Let's, let's uh, leave that one now. We'll go to Councillor uh, Patrick next, then Councillor Paul. Uh, yeah, just, just, just on um, addition to Chairman, um, we're, we're seeing in the planning papers a, a, a missing number, a planning number and some registration for data planning, that sort of thing missing. And I would just like to request that they are actually filled in and put the place in the printing, just for purposes of clarity. Yeah. Yeah. You're happy with that? Yes, Chairman, at the time the committee report saw uh, our, our drawing up, sometimes it's the case where we don't actually have the drawings before us, that they do the subject of the ongoing discussion, etc. But yeah, at Tate's point, it certainly has conditions that do, uh, that we do prefer to draw it, prefer to draw it, there are definitely four members tonight. Uh, well, to it will happen. Council Paul, the yeah. last one, I think. So, totally agree with uh, officer's advice. The speaker from Weedon, uh, again, as I said just now, totally eloquent, nothing more to add. Apart from the late reps from the local member, um, which I thought was very eloquent and was worth noting. I know the officer noted it earlier, but I think it's worth noting, and uh, I wish. Uh, the football teams down at Weedon, every success. Thank you, Councillor Paul. We have a proposition that the application be approved and seconded. It has four votes and clear now. We shall have a bit more votes before I'm finished. It's unanimous. Yeah, 14. The application is approved unanimously. Next application is 0717 in this church and chapel grounds. Thank you, Chairman. This is a semi-detached dwelling in Church Frampton. The property adjoins a Grade 2 listed building. This is a proposal for a two-storey rear extension and conversion of outbuilding. The proposal has been amended during the application process to reduce the overall impact on the designated heritage asset and the amenities of the adjoining neighbours. As a result, it's considered that the proposal will not have a harmful impact on the designated heritage asset or the adjoining neighbours through loss of life or loss of privacy. Overall, the application is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you. No speakers. A local member. Got to be Councillor Frenchman. It is. Thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know what to say, so I will reserve my comments until I've heard what my fellow <laughs> councillors <laughs> say. Um, so that's cool sitting on the fence. Is it? And that got plenty for me. <laughs> Would anybody like to make any comment on this uh, application in France? for Paul? Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, I've been through uh, the papers, uh, I've looked at the drawings. Um, I can't see a problem. Uh, with this guy former chairman, so I would agree on the advice. Is that a proposal, Councillor Paul? Yes, I'll propose it as well. If you okay. So I wish. 
right. I've got Councillor Randall to speak. Oh, first of all, is there a second? Yes. Councillor Ogre, you, you seconded. Would you like to speak now? Yeah, just very briefly. Okay. Again, okay. Councillor Randall went through the papers, and again, um, you know, like all the papers, they work together, and, and I can't see um, a reason not to approve. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Randall? They're only just picking up, obviously, the parish council. They've objected. I mean, and you just said there, you know, that the officer feels that um, light wouldn't be an issue. The parish council obviously do feel it would be an issue, um, and overpowering, potentially overlooking, and light reducing impact. So they feel that it would have an. Uh, they feel there would be an issue of reducing the light. The officer feels it isn't an issue of reducing the light. And then I sit there thinking, will it or won't it? It's often the parish council know, you know, they even brief their village and know which way the sun goes and whatever else. I don't know. I mean, if I've read it right, I think the parish council made comments and then they've altered there since they made their comments. Yes, I mean, if I've read it right, they, they refuse the height. Yeah, it wasn't. Well, I used to be their county councillor. I know Bampton Parish Council. If they feel strongly about something, there's somebody yeah. here yeah. Not yeah. speaking about it, banging the drum usually. Um, but yes, again, for you, Chair, I mean, it's a matter of fact that all development has an impact. Yeah. So there's yes. one percentage of officers is that this is an acceptable impact. Mm. Clearly, that's an all small parish council. Each step. You're entitled to a different view if you want to, but clearly, you need to sustain that as a reason to refuse it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, sorry, I've lost all this. So, I think Councillor Paul that wanted to speak. No, I was just trying to propose. You know, okay. Right. Right. Is there anybody else wishes to speak? If not, we'll go on to the proposition that the application be approved, which is been seconded. All those in favour, please go. Councillor Randall. Oh, right, those, those against? Two abstentions, that must yeah. be. Yes, two abstentions, yeah. The application is approved, subject to the condition. Yeah. 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 Unless that be taken in the uh, whole show. Yeah. Yeah. 0758. Why is it in Tonkin? Because it's Mike Warren. 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 Yes, Mike Warren, sorry. Yes, Mike Warren, sorry. Thank you, Chairman. It's already been mentioned that the application is before us because. It's, it's a councillor, so but <laughs> this is an application for a vehicle access for Four Malton Road in Holcote. As you can see by the photos, other properties in the road have very similar accesses. Um, the Highway Authority did not object to the proposal, and therefore it's recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Local member. Are you Councillor French when you No, I was going to ask a question. No. All right. Councillor No local member. No. Okay. Councillor French then, ask a question. Hasn't he got vehicular access already? Mm. How does he get his car there? In a sense, what they're doing is going over the curb. Oh, so you're talking about a drop curb, basically. Yeah. Oh, right, sorry, thank and you. And a proper looking access. Yeah. Rather than sort of well, I, I will go with officer's advice. So you're pro yeah. proposing? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Do you have a second, then? That's the patch here. Does anybody else wish to speak on it? No. Okay. We have a proposal to support the application and second it. All those in favour, please show it. Unanimous. Okay, the application is approved. Well, next application is in Pittsburgh, zero nine six one. I don't see. Don't be hesitant. Cut that oil operation. 
Yeah. Yes, another dodgy application by a dodgy applicant. Um, and the reason that's here is it, because it's done in this council is the applicant. 0879. Thank you, Chairman. This is an application for an extension and alteration of the existing car park for the countryside. 30 car parking bays and three motorcycle bays are proposed. The site is located within the conservation area of the Coventry's Country Park One. The proposal will involve the removal of trees to create the hard standing and to use similar materials to the existing car park. The landscape officer has been in negotiations with the uh, applicant and does not see it have any objection to the scheme as the existing trees which are proposed to be removed are of like, no significance. The proposal does involve planting of new vegetation which will increase the screening and the impact on the county and locality and including conservation area. Overall, it's considered the proposed mitigation will preserve the character of the conservation area. <coughs> Therefore, that it is recommended for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. We have a speaker, Mrs. Game. Game is from the Town Council. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, I'm from Dalton Town Council. The Town Council strongly objects to the removal of trees and destruction of a wildlife habitat close to a designated conservation area, a nature reserve. <coughs> The majority of the country park is already limited in depth and width of vegetation that encourages biodiversity and wildlife habitats. And it is imperative that we preserve this habitat within an expanding town. The Town Council refers to Gallantry District Council Settlements and Countryside Local Plan, in which it states one of the main strategic green spaces is Gallantry Country Park. Therefore, to extend the car park, contradicts the aims and purpose of a country park and the aims of the district council in relation to its policy to protect the environment. The town council would like to highlight the district council statement within the Dalvinji Settlements and Countryside Local Plan in relation to existing green spaces being protected as they are an important and attractive feature of Dalvinji. Dalvinji should continue to be de developed as a green town with landscape builds and spaces. They are a highly valued resource and these should be protected and enhanced. <coughs> Dalvinji Country Parks and Surroundings is not only an important area of amenity, green space with historical associations. It also forms a, strate a strategic spatial role as part of a green wedge within the context of current proposals for expanding the town and must be preserved. In consideration of above, the town council are bemused as to this application and ask the questions, why encourage the use of vehicles to a facility that is key within the town development plan to promote the health and well-being of local people who are to be encouraged to walk and cycle to the country park? To conclude, and before this planning application is approved, the Town Council would ask that the District Council demonstrates a real need to extend a car parking facility before the town disposes of another area of green space. In the future, when most people will be living in urban areas and cities, it is most important to have open spaces and woodland for the mental and physical well-being of the population. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. I must make one point that the... Um Daventry Country Park is not only there for people in Daventry, it's for people in the villages as well. They can't oh, yes, I cycle do. and walk there, they have to come by car. Local members. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think to be is the first word. Um, as a member of the Town Council at its inception, um, and then later on in the planning, before I gave up, um, I was, uh, I instigated a feasibility study for the conservation area. Some members of the town council might not remember that. But that's a fact, my colleague by the side of me assisted in that endeavour. That eventually led, when I became a district councillor, to the conservation area proposal being put forward and accepted for the Western Meadows 
up until that time, the only part of the park that was a conservation area was the actual water. Well, I never. Anyway, um, the chairman has already said, I mean, I go to uh, uh, Drake Water, I go to Stanwyck Park, I go down to Stanford Lakes down at, uh, near uh, Hatfield. Um, they have parking facilities. Um, I'm on a blue badge and I'm more than happy to park in their car park with a little man in a wheelchair um, looking after my car. Daventry Park forms a strategic spatial role as part of a green wedge. Yes, you are right. Absolutely right. However, you missed out one important factor. It must be preserved, you say? Agree? Yeah. You missed out the word enhanced. Daventry Town, at this moment in time, has more public open space than it has ever had in its existence. If you take north of Lake Farm, <coughs> from uh, Middlemore right the way through to the Welton Lane. If you take the proposed uh, or the site from between the country park and Monksmore, there is not a huge weight of public open space. The country park is due to extend up to the um, uh, Grand Union Canal. Added to that, Kentle Woods, um, people forget about, which again was there because of the town council. We, we encourage people to cycle, I'm, I'm happy that they can cycle, but as my colleague has said, they can't cycle from uh, Woodford Horse. Um, there is a need for car parking, it needs to be done sympathetically, the material will be permeable, the trees will be replaced, and I can assure you no wildlife habitat uh, will be um, destroyed on a permanent basis. In fact, it will be enhanced. I have no problem in putting this forward for approval, Chairman. You can take that as a proposition. Thank you. You have to say that, Councillor Robertson. Before I come to you to speak, Councillor Robertson, is there another local member for that ward? Because I've got I've got Councillor Morgan and Councillor Randall to speak. Are, are either you local members? Councillor Hills is a local Councillor Hills is. Okay, you can speak first then, Councillor Hills. Eh? And then I'm going to the second, which is Councillor Hills. Thank you, Chairman. I, I speak not only as the local member, but also the fact is that the country park is part of my portfolio, something of which I am very proud and we call it the jewel in the crown and that's the only area that I really agree with the town council that it's the jewel in the crown. Firstly, we are continually upgrading and enhancing the country park. We've won the Green Flag Award 15 out of the last 16 years and that's a national recognition and something which I say we should be proud of. But they increase and they um, change the goalposts every year. So we need to keep up to date, not just to win the green flag, which is important, but to ensure that visitors to the park get the best that we can do for them. And you rightly, as chairman, pointed out that it's not there just for the people of the town, it's there for the people of the district. And we get many people from the district who come by car from the outlying areas. And there is no doubt about it that the car park needs improvement. Now, we have recently installed new equipment for the younger children. We're looking at the car park. We're also looking at enhancing the cafeteria. And as Councillor Paul said, we are also extending the area here, uh, on the zone near the Union Canal, which will also provide extra facilities. So we're not giving up anything. We're providing extra facilities. We're welcoming more visitors. The last count we had that there was something like 40,000 visits per year and this is it going up year on year on year and we can either say no don't do anything stand still let it stagnate lose business and the revenue we get from the car park goes in towards the upkeep of the country park and it's proved to be very successful so I totally support this and I would ask the committee to do so as well. Thank you. 
Right, Councillor Robinson, you seconded the proposal. You can speak next. Basically, thank you, Chair. I was only going to add to what's already been said and it's been said very eloquently. The very idea that um, this country park um, is going to be used more by not allowing people to park there is just quite anathema. Um, you need cars these days. It's a quick <coughs> trip just from the town, let alone uh, from the villages and from the surrounding area of Dugtree. So it has to have adequate parking facilities. And um, they are going to cut some trees down, yes, but they're going to plant some others. They're not terrifically valuable trees. They're going to be, they're going to be moved effectively. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Councillor Olson. Right, I've got Councillor Randall, Councillor Morgan and Councillor Carr, all deputy members. Thanks. Yes, thank you, Chairman. On page 192, on the second paragraph, it says the rationale behind this application for the additional parking area is that parking often overspills onto Northern Way. When? You know, that, that is the big question to me, is overspill along Northern Way. There's bollards along Northern Way. I've never seen park, cars parked along Northern Way. So for me, that rationale, I don't understand. That, that's the thing that I really don't understand. A lot of local people don't park in the car park because many people move that, use that park three, four, five times a week. Um, so they don't park in the car park because they have to park. They don't park on Northern Way though. They park more in a, they park over by the Queen of Hearts in the car park or they will park further up into the estate. So whether you increase those parking, they're still not going to come into the park, the country park. The way that you do. and the other thing, I don't know how many of you have used the country park. Do you use the country park? No, of well, in the top field, we've got overspilled car park. Um, it's not very often used because the car parking, generally you can get space in there. So to me, it all sits behind this rationale, rationale parking on Northern Way. No, sorry, don't agree with it happened. Okay, and Randall. neither do many local people that I've been asking who live there. How often do you see it happen? Done. Okay, then, as one of, my, one of my teams actually manages country park, so I can advise that the overspill um, car parking area, which is the field in front, that is used on occasion, that it is open to uh, mm -hmm. some yeah. events, yeah. but it's certainly not permanent parking and it is anyone who's got a big event mm -hmm. the, the one, and it is an issue we have had issues um, been reported with the police. It does happen when there's um, busy weekends and things that there has been frequent parking on Northern Way. This has been witnessed many times by the people doing the events. It's been reported by the Rangers. It's been reported by my team who have got afraid of the park. So it does happen on occasion when when things are on and during holiday weekends, that sort of thing. So it is an issue from time to time. And, you know, it's very reg uh, regularly on a weekend. The car park is built first. It is a relatively small car park for the size of the facility. And um, sorry to contradict you, Councillor Hills, but I think it's 400,000 visitors yes, a year. Yes, I should have said that. I looked at my notes. What's in all between yeah. people? Eh? <laughs> and ju just coming back on that, that I've attended the major events. I've not seen parking on them from so. I, 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 must make a I comment. disagree on the rationale, that's all. I must make a comment, Councillor Landlord. Although it's this council applying, I can't see any applicant applying for a car park, which must have cost, it'll cost them tens of thousands, to put it right, mm -hmm. uh, to do it if it's not needed. It would be a lot of waste of money. Why would you provide a car park? Well, that's right, that's right. why? That's why right. it says something else future well, on, going along. Unless you've got it right, I don't and know. it is needed. I don't, I don't know, I don't feel it is, so. Okay, Councillor Morgan's next. <coughs> Thank you for permitting me to speak, Councillor Osborne. I actually would like to agree with Councillor Ailes and uh, Councillor Paul. And um, I have some sympathy for the point about parking on Northern Way, which Councillor Randall mentions. However, from my own surveys, and I'm sure also Councillor Wesley would have picked this up as well, but when we have toured Abbey Set uh, Ashby Fields across the road from there, we have a number of residents actually saying that they parked um, users of the country car uh, park actually park in those areas and it's a, a major inconvenience and often a, a safety issue for them as well. So I very much welcome from somebody whose ward is the opposite side of the road this development and I, I don't understand this concept that there's something going on in the future. At the end of the day, if the council are applying for this, it's because there is a requirement. Um, as for the uh, biodiversity issues, the replanting will replenish what is lost. 
Uh, you know, you only have to look around now at the Christmas trees that everybody's got. Basically, wood is a uh, renewable resource if replanted. And as for the point about people uh, only have to get there by uh, walking or some other uh, more eco-friendly transport, we actually only live in Middlemore. And when my daughter was uh, only one and a half a year ago, there's no way you could get down to the country park with a five-year-old and a one and a half on foot, and then actually two of the whole country park and get round for the poor kids exhausted. So to really make use of this fantastic asset we have in the community, a small number of parking spaces required, and as a ward member for the other side of the road and a town member, I'd fully support this. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Morgan. Right, Councillor Carl, next. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, while well, I go along with the uh, recommendation of approval, um, it does worry me on uh, what that um, residents have brought to my attention that our car park has now been closed for several weeks. So, is this a, a retrospective planning? Yeah, well, why is the car park shut? Not that for you, Chairman. There's, it's a, there's a two-part car park improvement. They're currently resurfacing the existing car park which is shown here. Um, yeah, on yeah. the So the existing car park is being resurfaced, so that's this here, all the way along. So that's, um, we've chosen that, it's quite a distant part of the year to get that done. That's just here. And then, um, subject to planning permission, the other part of the work will be, will be started when that's completed. Then so. Okay, Councillor Carr. Can I just make one comment, yeah. Chairman? We've got two more speakers. Oh, sorry, I'll take that part. Councillor Osborne. I just want to say, um, I've been to ca uh, for the country park lots and lots of times with uh, both sets of uh, nieces and nephews. Um, and when I've, when I've been, if I've been with younger ones that are like a, a, a nursery age, um, and I go during the day, it's very, very quiet and you can park. But if I've gone um, after school, there's loads of people that take their kids there after school um, and at the weekends. And I actually have witnessed myself when, um, when my uh, husband's family lived at Ashby Fields, we used to go round there regularly for walks. And uh, it, it was a hol it must have been a holiday, uh, bank holiday or something. And from the roundabout, just a little bit down, there was cars parked, half uh, half on, half off. And I was like, "Oh, this is quite, you know, unusual." And it was parked quite far down. Um, and then when we got, we we thought, well, there's no way we're gonna we, we're gonna go in there. But I mean, it's such a valuable, valuable asset. And if you do go in there, it is often totally packed. And if you've got a family with little children, I do agree that if you're, you know, in the surrounded areas, that you should walk uh, or should cycle. Because yes, it's fantastic. It's about getting out there and getting in the fresh air. But if you've got a young family. Just like as Councillor Morgan has said, if you've got a, a, a family at, at small ages, if you walk there, they have a play. By the time you know they've played, they're tired. If, if, if you're a parent, you know everybody knows this, and they'll be too tired to walk home. So you've got to carry them or whatever. And the same applies to cycling. Some people do have to um, get get their uh, cars there, and if. if at the end of the day, you know, if all these people are still going to use it, surely that is the important bit, and it's it's not going to it's not going to harm. Everything's going to be like the trees are going to be replanted, so it's not going to be, you know, overall in the long run. Surely it's better for our generation, you know, for for the for the children. So you know, I, I fully support the application. I think it's fantastic, and. Um, yeah, long, long may it last as well. Thank you, Councillor Osborne. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. The moment passed. Councillor Ed. Councillor Ed. It's basically just good information because something that has been said. I did go down today. I, I do agree with this completely. I'm full of approval for it. I do think we need the extra parking. But I did go down today and um, just to say the car park is not completely closed. They've done about a third of it 
and it is now opened and they do the gates burned down. And by the look of it, it won't take long to finish the rest. Thanks for the information. We have a proposal that Can I just make one brief comment? Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry, I did forget to tell him. Yeah. 400,000 visitors is justification for extending the car. Thank you. Yeah. Proposal the application be approved, which has been seconded. All those in favor, please show. All right, those against? One. Uh, the application is approved. Sir. Right, now we get to the one that I was trying to do last time, which is Pittsford. That's in 0961. Thank you, Chairman. This is a site within the confines of Pittsford, land to the rear of Wicket's house. The site benefits from planning permission for the construction of a single dwelling. Therefore, the principle has been established on the site. The extent of permission is between Wicket's house and Gardner Cottage. There is a diagram before which we have got. This is an outline application for the construction of a single storey dwelling. The access and siting is only proposed at this stage. The description of the application needs to be altered to include the siting. If members agree with the officer's advice, only one dwelling can be constructed. Concern has been expressed regarding overlooking to neighbouring properties. No details have been submitted regarding the height or location of the windows. This is something to consider at the reserved matters at the stage. However, the distances involved are in excess of 22 metres. Concern has also been raised regarding the impact on trees, which are subject to preservation orders. The landscape officer is satisfied a dwelling could be built on this site without a detrimental impact on these trees. Conditions can be imposed at the reserved matters application stage. The proposal will not affect a designated heritage asset. Although the neighbouring property has some historical association with the village, this is not a list of buildings. The overall design will be considered again at the reserve matter stage. The proposal is therefore recommended for approval. Members' attention is drawn to late representation. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Catherine. Two speakers. Mr. Armitage, you use against the application. Yes, uh, excuse me. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the um, I wish to object to the planning application for the development in the rear garden of Wickets. The proposed site was part of the terrace garden at the woodlands of the house formerly known as Little Pittsford and now called Middlesex House. And as a result of this terracing, the proposed site is some 10 feet higher than the main gardens and buildings of Middlesex House. And because of the orientation of the planned house, its elevated position, windows, well, we don't know of them, but windows on the north and eastern side will overlook Middlesex House, resulting in a loss of privacy and visual intrusion. In addition, because of its elevated position, headlamps of vehicles manoeuvring on the site would shine into Middlesex House. The proposed development, by reason of its massive height and proximity to neighbouring boundaries, would have an overbearing impact on adjoining neighbours. The proposed site currently benefits from areas of mature woodland. These trees form an attractive backdrop to the houses on the high street and make a major contribution to the, to the character of the village. Their loss or damage would completely alter the aspect of the village. They also provide important habitat for local wildlife, including many bird species and bats. Because of the existing terracing and woodland on the plot, <coughs> the available area for building is much smaller than the plan suggests, and the planned house is extremely close to existing trees. Any building work is likely to damage the trees and endanger the wildlife in the area. The applicant has already removed a number of mature trees from the site and plans to remove at least seven more. The applicant already had a bank consent on the house next to Wicket's on Ride Lane. This new application would replace it. If this new application is approved, the house next to Wicket's could not be built as the land is required to provide an access onto the proposed site. 
Planning consent already exists for further infill developments along Ryde Lane. This infilling along the natural building line of Ryde Lane has the least impact on the area's character and amenity, but still provides new homes. Any proposed development on this back plan would have an overbearing and negative impact on the surroundings and carries a significant risk of damage to the ecology of the area. Middlesex House and its surrounding grounds, Little Pittsford, are of significant local interest. Photographs for the house, for example, are held in the libraries of Harvard and Princeton Universities in America. And I believe that this insensitive backland development will damage the area's character and amenity and should be avoided, particularly as it does not give any additional housing. Thank you. Thank you. Which house do you look at? Middlesex House. Thank you. Right. Mr. Chu is the applicant. Uh, thank you, Chairman, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for allowing me this opportunity to make a representation in favour of this application. I appreciate that you are all more than capable of interpreting the planning proposals before you. However, I would like to highlight some key aspects. Significant endeavours have been undertaken in regard to this application to liaise with the planning officer, during which time the density of the proposed development has been halved and the positioning of the proposals amended to both maximise the utilisation of the ample existing screening whilst minimising any perceived adverse impact on the neighbouring properties. I would take this opportunity to bring to your attention that this application effectively replaces the detailed application DA oblique 2015 oblique 505 for a detached two and a half storey dwelling which has approval and is located significantly closer to neighbouring properties than that outlined in this application. There are numerous existing mature trees on the site which provide extensive screening to the neighbouring properties. In addition to which, further screening could be requested in reserve matters for any subsequent detailed application. It is in the interest of the proposals to retain the existing screening, to both maintain privacy and retain the aesthetic appeal of the site. The current proposals fall outside the 22 metre rule, in addition to which, as an outline application, no window locations have been fixed at this time. Similarly, the scale, density and appearance have not been fixed, as these will be determined during any subsequent detailed application. I would respectfully refer you to a couple of relatively recent planning applications that have been granted in the immediate vicinity of this site. Application VA, I believe, 2010-482 was for a substantial two and a half storey dwelling with rooms in the room. The site being in a region of a metre higher than the existing dwelling wickets, which is located to the immediate north. Similarly, <coughs> application VA, I believe, 2011 323 was for a substantial two and a half storey six bedroom dwelling and is located approximately a metre and a half from the building line of the existing dwelling wickets located to the south. These previous approved applications were for dwellings which were significantly closer to neighbouring properties having little existing screening. Surely these previous planning precedents should be taken into account when considering this current application. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Local member, Councillor Bradshaw. Thank you. I might have more of an opinion on this uh, application. Um, I, I was unsure about it, and I have talked to the parish council and got their views on it. And I have to say that that they uh, and to some extent myself are much more comfortable with the existing. Um, application for the house at the side rather than the house that's currently under consideration. So I don't quite know how you, you, you go about dealing with that. Um, the trees are, 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 are a big concern because they do form a backdrop to the conservation area in the village. They form an important amenity to people in the village. <coughs> As I understand it, a number of trees have already been cut down before TPOs were put on them. And that the TPOs that have been recently uh, put on, uh, and perhaps officers can advise me, are being uh, appealed, if that's the right word, so that trees can be cut down. There's an application in. 
they, that's the works, the TPA trees. I believe there's might be some removal as well, but that's still being considered by our, our landscape officer. The, 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 the positioning of the houses, I, I haven't been to that particular site recently, but the trees are on site are quite large, and I understand that the house, uh, as proposed, is built right up to them. And as we know, that the roots of trees go out to the edges of the canopies generally. So, as you can see, it's a very rural part of the village. And I think that uh, I would like to explore the possibilities of finding reasons to refuse this particular application because we prefer the siting in the aspect of the existing application if their house has to be built there. And we don't understand why uh, the, there, is, there is this application to change it when the other one has been accepted. Well, this is not an uncommon thing to happen. So the applicant then has the choice of which one they will build. They can't build both, both as it's been said. So, so we are purely dealing with the second one. I know, one I realise that, and I'm at full uh, reasons of, uh, and I don't know how you, you phrase it, but the protection of the trees, and also the scale and massing and the overlooking and the loss of immunity at Middlesex House. It's an yeah, yeah, no, this is an outline application only. It doesn't mean in, if at the reserve matters application we're going to approve a house on the site for certain reasons. It sort of, it just means that we can consider sort of overlooking, overbearing on sort of the adjoining neighbours at the reserve matters application. So the consultation has also happened or occurred with the landscape officer who is satisfied that the house can be built without having a detrimental impact. How on can the he be satisfied if he doesn't know what's being built? Well, the siting of the proposal. But is, if it's a four-storey house, then it's not appropriate, is it? Then that's just, that's something to consider. What I'm saying is he cannot have, he cannot have agreed because he doesn't know what's being built either. That's at the reserve matters application stage. I, I right, think so. the point of council Frenchman, he's, what he's saying is it could be built without damage to that. We won't know whether it could be until he puts the application, but it could be put in a position where it doesn't have the, uh, an effect. As to whether they put it in a position where it does have an effect, you'll be able to say no at the reserve matter stage. So that's a strategy, isn't it? Again, to you, Chairman, what's before members is the sighting. So the sighting of the building is on that site. What is not before you is the design, <coughs> Even <coughs> that building or the fenestration, whatever, but the siting is is as before. It's on that one. It's not currently on display. So are you that siting is the siting that the landscape officer has assessed. The same landscape officer <coughs> imposed the tree preservation order. So I would guess that having imposed the tree preservation order, the landscape officer is satisfied with the siting that's on that particular drawing with respect to those trees that are the subject of the said TPO. Okay. Thank you. So, Chair, one last point then. That, that means then that we could end up with anything from uh, something the size of a garden shed up to something the size of a, of a small hotel. It won't, it, 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 we've no idea, have we? Again, for you, Chairman, no, you end up with a, a building sited as shown on that drawing. What is within your control is the design, the appearance, and the height of that building, and indeed uh, the fenestration. Um, but you know, those are matters that are the subject of the reserve matters application. Does it have to fall that within be, that footprint? No. That's the siting of the building that they're seeking permission Same for. Sure. You're being asked to consider, and similarly, the siting of the garage that's shown in that drawing. Sorry, it's like as it's Christmas, I'm going to say some strange words. I have some sympathy from Councillor French. As it's Christmas, I'm going to say that. Yeah. Put it on the card because because there is a difficulty with this. There is a full permission in existence, which you're saying on balance, I slightly prefer, which also has established the principle of development on this site. And the applicant here is saying that he's putting in another application for development in principle on this particular site. So the only difference is the siting slightly further out. So if you're going to find reasons for refusal, you have to deal with it in that very narrow lacuna of the fact that the siting 
has moved slightly across. Um, beyond, because beyond that, this is simply an in-principle application, and therefore beyond that, all the principle has already been established. Does that help yeah. make sense of the difference that you find? Yes. Um, um, yes. Um, one of the speaker said, because I could not see on uh, Google Earth, said that it was 10 feet. Is that what I understand? Yes. Of difference between the two houses. And yeah. 10 feet, it's, uh, in my sense, it's uh, three, three meters. As you can see, this is the this is the. I cannot understand really how the two houses. So yes, can you explain? This is the rear of Middlesex House, which is the neighbouring property. Mm -hmm. As the photo is being taken, looking towards Middlesex House, mm -hmm. the site is behind us, and you can see that there is a drop in level between the site and the or the neighbouring property. There so, but the, the, the site is, is, is three. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is at the, the site is three three meter lower, and because I used to live somewhere, and I had three meters of three meters, and I had a property below it. You do oversee uh, completely the neighbors. That is more my point. If it's three meters and you have something built, you really are on top of the other neighbors. It, it, it sort of the drop also steps down, and also if you have a look at the site location plan, yeah. sort of the red line, Middlesex House is the one right there. Yeah. So if there's there is a large distance between the two, and again, sort of the overbearing impact or loss of light or loss of privacy can be considered at the reserve matters stage. It's not one three meter drop. Right, I've got several people to speak now. So, Councillor, what's three minutes over here? Councillor Paul, next. Sorry, Chairman. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll pass. You're fine. Right, Councillor Oregon, I just wanted to bring yeah, in our legal name. Sorry, I'm, officers, I'm reading through the report that was written by yourselves. They talk about this permission that already exists, and then it goes on to say, in this context, it could be said that is not definitive. Are we saying definitively that permission already exists and therefore this one must exist, or are we saying it could be seen and therefore it's subjective? All the planning is written in words like what, that. What we're saying is there is a full permission in place yeah. for a given site, therefore the principle of development on that site has been established. However, this one has moved slightly across. So the, the principle is being sought for this site has moved slightly across. So if you, you have an objection, your objection has to relate to that to thing it. where it's moved across. Okay, so, so it is subjective. So if we consider this a new development, yeah. then, then, then it has to then comply with... It has to relate project. to that area yeah. where the principle can we consider it a up? new development? If it is a new development, then, then, then we can bring in the criteria that is found in the spatial... The, the principle of development has been established, so right. we can only really consider the, site, the reciting of the property within that site. Right, so it's not seen as a new development? No, it's, so it's, a new it's a new application for a new development, but if, if what you're saying, can we apply the existing policies, they are the policies of development, but what weighs against that is the fact that principle of a dwelling has already been established. No, 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 I understand that. So, so therefore, so it, when we look at policy R1, it has to meet the criteria. Well, well I would advise yeah. against the use of those, applying those policies in this particular circumstance, on the basis that yes. the principle yes. of a dwelling has been established. Yeah, but it only says it could be. No, it's no, the principle no. of a dwelling has been established. Right. That is a matter of fact. Yeah. Okay. Right. What is subjective is the impact of that development. Not the principle. Okay. Well, it's, that's not what it says here, sir. It says, in this context, it could well, be said that permission already exists. It could be said. Well, I'm telling you, permission does exist well, for a for a for a Okay. Uh, Thank you, Chairman. Um, what I don't have a problem um, 
going along with officer's advice on this. Basically, because the paperwork um, eases any problems I might have had by the reserve matters. Because the landscape officer, in his writer, says, well, this is an outline application. If the application is mine to be approved, it is a paramount importance that given the aforementioned level issues from landscape and visual consideration, that the property is single story to limit massing and impact on skyline. Um, and over on page 204, HX36 is in, um, connected to backland development. And E in that says proposed building should be single story in height unless it can be demonstrated that higher buildings would not unduly affect the immunity of the existing dwellings, nor appear visually discordant in views from public space. His writing then says, in this instance, it has not been demonstrated in multi-story property, would not impact upon the privacy and residential immunity of neighbouring properties. However, this strictly needs to be addressed at reserve matter stage, a scale, appearance and landscape are to be de determined at that stage. I have enough um, faith in our office to make sure that they will look into that very deeply. And if it is above single story, it's up to the applicant to demonstrate it won't have the impact yeah. on yeah. Yeah. So, um, can I say on those grounds, don't is that the proposal? I'd like to propose it. Right, do you have a second? Yeah. Yeah. Councillor Chandler. Yeah. Would you like to speak now, Councillor Chandler? No, enough has been said already. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor Robertson. I uh, just want to say, thank you, Chair, uh, that um, I suppose what Councillor Edwards says there, um, but are we actually determining levels of this application stage? No. no. I didn't think so. So that's a reserved matter. Therefore, what's he got to do with this application? No. Councillor Edwards, Swift. Just a quick little bit, uh, very quick, uh, when the full application uh, is uh, finalised, will, will we have this application in front of us again? It, it all depends on sort of the comments which come in from the parish council and um, sort of in line with the scheme of delegation. So you have a chance to criticise anything? Yeah. <coughs> okay. Well, there's an application, <laughs> there's a proposal for the application to be approved, which has been seconded. All those in agreement, please show. Right, those against? Was the one abstention? That concludes the committee, ladies and gentlemen. May you all have a nice Christmas.